Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Well, I'm back in Garming, Austria. This is the place that I have been co-teaching a philosophy class for Franciscan University. Ah, I'm currently hiking up a bit of an incline and we'll be going to Holy Mass at 10. It's been so wonderful to travel each week to a different country to proclaim Christ as King and then to come back to our little town here in Lower Austria just to sort of whew, relax and pray and sauna <laughs> and yeah look at this beautiful crucifix here there is so many of these just around the countryside We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. This is where I am. This week, my wife and I will be going to Slovenia to give some talks. I think Switzerland the week after. I believe Prague the week after. <laughs> Netherlands the week after that. And then I'll be flying back to Steubenville for 10 days to record some, listen to me now, big name interviews. Who can guess? Let me know in the comments below. By the way, this is a secret podcast. Don't tell anybody about it. Don't subscribe. Ah, glory to Jesus Christ. So we have this episode in the Gospels, at least in the Eastern calendar. I I'm not sure about the West, I'm probably similar, uh, where Thomas doubts Christ. And then when Christ enters the room, he falls down before him, hey, and says, my Lord and my God. And I was reading one spiritual author, and he was saying that Thomas clung to Christ like a shipwrecked man clings to a plank of wood in the ocean. And I thought, wow, how amazing is that? You know, it's easy to talk about wanting salvation. But what's interesting about all of these positive things in Christianity is if we, if we want the positive side, we have to admit the negative side within us, eh? So if I want salvation, <laughs> I have to be helpless. Like if I'm not helpless, I actually don't need saving. If I want freedom, I have to admit that I'm enslaved. If I want healing, I have to admit what? That I'm broken in some sense, wounded in some sense. If I want forgiveness, I have to admit that I'm wrong. <laughs> oh man. And you know, in the abstract, I'm okay admitting these things. I'm wrong, I'm wounded, uh, I'm desperate, I'm helpless. <laughs> But in the particulars, I'm not good at that. You know, like, okay, yeah, good. Well, tell me how you're desperate. It's kind of like when people say, hey, I'm a sinner. But people don't say things like, hey, I'm a fornicator. Or, or like, you know, I gossip. I slander. I, uh, I look at pornography. Like, we don't say that with as much ease as, hey, I'm a sinner. And maybe there's a reason for that. <laughs> but the point is, oh, I just, I read that about the man clinging to the wood. And I thought... Christ, let me love you above all else. Because you think about the man clinging to the plank of wood in a seemingly endless ocean. The man chooses the wood above all the delights of the ocean, <laughs> or at least the delights that he could swim to and experience before dying. You know, you can imagine someone saying, look, look at the, look at the fish. Go underneath, look at look, look underneath. <laughs> Swim out here, see the horizon. And he wants none of it because he knows that if he's going to be saved, it's going to be through this plank of wood because he's exhausted. The ocean is perilous. And likewise, there are many delights that the world offers us. Now we're really going uphill. There are many delights that the world offers us. And I want so much 
God, give me the strength to cling to you and to forsake everything else. To use it, but to not need it. And I know I'm not close to that now. And maybe that's kind of what I meant about being okay in the abstract, but not in the particulars. You know, like, and if I don't admit Christ, it is you that I should be clinging to. Clearly, I need to sit down. One second. <laughs> it is you, Christ, that I need. And it's you I ought to be clinging to. And yet, very often, I cling to everything else. You know? Like, I ate like crap yesterday. I really did. Had donuts and just whatever. Just kind of let myself go. Just kind of gave in to wherever my passions were leading me. It's funny how in the world, this is thought as freedom. You know, like imagine putting a boat in an ocean, to use another ocean analogy, and to rip out the rudder. Well, now what's the boat going to do? It's going to go wherever the waves push it. And without self-discipline, without prayer and the sacraments and relying upon the grace that Christ gives us, we're like that. We just get tossed to and fro by our to and fro by our passions. I want a donut. I want another piece of pizza. I want another cup of coffee. I want another drink of beer. And uh, that's what the world would say is freedom. Yeah, a boat without a rudder. You just got to go with the flow, man. You just got to. But it's like, no, this is this is not good. This is not a good idea. It also makes men weak, you know. Just to give in to the passions. St. Dominic said, you know, the man who governs his passions is master of his world. You can be a hammer or an anvil. Choose. I don't want to be beat down upon by the hammer of my passions. I want to beat down upon my will. Um, by the hammer of reason, I suppose you'd say. And we all want that, don't we? We all want that. It's so tempting to hate what we believe ourselves incapable of attaining. So maybe you're having trouble with chastity and then you encounter somebody who really does live the chaste life. It's, 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 we just want to demonize them. Maybe you don't, but you, you get the point. It's like, oh, that's frigid, that's uptight, whatever. It's like, no, there's a man. Anyway, Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. We'll say a little prayer. Thank you for dropping by to my secret little podcast, which again, don't subscribe to and don't tell anybody about. Hey, um, before I read this prayer, two things. One, I'm very excited about Catholic Lo-Fi. If you haven't checked out our channel, you can subscribe to that one if you want. I'll allow that. We're going to be cranking out a new album every month with beautiful artwork. It's uh, not easy to do, so please... Please go and check it out, Catholic Lo-Fi. And then as I say, we've got some massive news coming up on Pints with Aquinas soon, so you can go check that out if you want. Let's read Psalm 3. Just a little bit of Psalm 3 here. Here, check this out. <laughs> oh Lord, why do so many taunt me? Many are those who rise up against me. Many are those who say of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I cried out to the Lord in a loud voice, and he heard me from his holy mountain. As for me, I lay down and slept. I rose again, for the Lord will be my help. I will not fear ten thousand people arrayed against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, my God. You have stricken all who fought me without cause. You have shattered the sinner's teeth. Salvation is the Lord's. Upon your people be your blessing. Ooh, the Father is for us, friends. I think the demons wish to convince us that the opposite is true. Uh, that the Lord wishes to smite us. But in Holy Scripture we read, no, the Lord is a shield around you, actually. What does that mean, a shield around you? I mean, a shield around me... It's not much different, is it, than a, a barracks of some sort in which I'm enclosed and safe. Yeah. 
So this trust in the Lord, this trust in his protection. While the demons and the atheists say there is no salvation for him in God, I trust in you, Lord. I trust that you'll hear me. And that trust in you and in your attentiveness to me leads me to rest. So I can say, as for me, I lay down and slept. I rose again for the Lord will be my help. And even when he says, I'll not fear 10,000 people, it's not because of his own courage. It's because why? He says, um, oh Lord, save me, my God. His help is in the Lord. Our help is in the Lord. Christ is risen.